When the pandemic hit, people went online for pet care. It was necessary then, but long term, is this good for your pets? Certified animal behavior consultant Steve Dale joining us to break it all down. And of course, you have a guest here as well. I have a very special guest. This is Brody from the Anti Cruelty. And Brody is available for oh, adoption. How awesome. awesome yes. is that? Brody, Brody was in the shelter as a puppy mm. and oh. then adopted out. And this is a big issue now housing. Mm. So the folks apparently said, we can move, we need to move, but mm -hmm. couldn't find anywhere that allowed a dog mm -hmm. that they could afford. Mm -hmm. So Brody mm -hmm. lands back at the shelter, yeah. mm -hmm. and Brody is kind of nervous because, I mean, yeah. after all, this is daytime Chicago. Chicago. Right. This is the big time WGN. Oh, all right, I know. Brody, you're good. But, you're good. but yeah. Brody is a great dog, really energetic, really happy, happy dog, and would be happy to be in your home, anticruelty.org. They have their big event coming up called okay. Bark along the lakefront, adjacent to Soldier Field, okay. uh, mm -hmm. Soldier Field on the Green, and that is June 8th, starting at 9 a.m., and you can learn more about that there. All right. So everyone well, knows about telehealth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit more about what we should be considering when it comes to that. So it seems best. like a good idea, and in many ways it is a good idea. Mm -hmm. There are problems, though. If uh -oh. you have no relationship with that veterinary professional on the other end of the line, mm -hmm. They don't know you, they don't know your pet, they don't have your pet's records. Mm. Can you describe, think about it with young kids who cannot speak for themselves. And in fact, the American Pediatric Association says, oh, we're concerned about it. Not if you have a relationship with the doctor, with the pediatrician, that's fine. But if you don't, that young, very young child can't speak for himself or herself, mm. it is the same with our pets. All right, and, and I imagine you probably need to touch the pet and to see the pet and be able to just feel any issues or some discomfort or, or such. So, but there's still people that are out there offering it. Yeah, they are. And this is really, in a way, this segment's not about pets, it's a consumer protection segment mm -hmm. because there are many of those third party operators, direct to consumers, reaching out to people. It sounds like a great deal. Mm -hmm. People are desperate. They want to know what's going on with their fur baby. However, with no relationship whatsoever, no veterinary client patient relationship. For example, that person might be in another country. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And they're not revealing that to you. Yeah. And if they're in another state even, yeah. you have no legal recourse for starters. Which is very important. Now, now, can you walk us through a possible benefit? Sometimes there are little dumb things you might just want a little bit of knowledge about. Yeah, so if I need to know whether I need to go to an emergency room or not, mm -hmm. I suppose that's just fine. It's called teletriage, mm -hmm. and, and that's okay. But what isn't okay in my view, and view incidentally of the American Veterinary Medical Association, when drugs are prescribed, which they're not supposed to do, but they do that all the time. How do they know if there previously was an adverse response? And as a pet parent, do you always remember, do you always understand yeah, everything yeah. the veterinarian has told you? Is there any kind of advocacy work in this field right now, or anybody like um, trying to pass any protections or anything like that? It's the like Wild that? West, oh, <laughs> you know, and that's the problem. I mean, that all began during the pandemic for all the right reasons. Reasons. Right, but we needed some, it. Yeah, but some of these companies are in it to make money. No, I have no issue with companies making money, uh -huh. but not off the backs of pet parents. Okay. I don't think that's a good idea. And I am really concerned because they are becoming popular because they sound so good. So you buy a car, you buy pet insurance, you buy mm. carpeting, you mm. buy all sorts of things, that, random things, and you get free pet advice from a professional. And I, then they begin charging you for it. That's all okay. What kind of advice are you getting? It sounds good, and I don't think it is good. Okay. Mm. All right. Just because so, they offer it doesn't mean it's a so good thing. Exactly. Buyer beware. You have to be your pet's best advocate, though. Yeah. I mean, do you know exactly what's wrong with your pet? If you did, you wouldn't be on that call in the first place. Right. And you're right. The veterinary professional has to touch sometimes x-ray that pet, mm -hmm. as, as smelling. Smell, I was just smelling. Saying, smell you are so important, right. you know, because it can indicate a problem or you issue, right? You are so right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And when technology can do that virtually, maybe yeah. I'm all about it. We're in trouble then. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, we're in trouble. <laughs> okay, for more knowledge, more information, stevedale.tv.